Oddgrub's journey was meant to end here. It was intended as a one-off, special video to celebrate Skyrim's 7th anniversary. I never thought about it becoming a series. But how could it not? This one video quickly led to more views and subscribers than I've had in years. Following this success, I would normally make a note to do a sequel, store it away somewhere safe for a rainy day, then focus on other projects instead for a few months. The reason for this is to avoid burnout from doing too much of the same kind of work. Also, I don't want to be known for doing just one kind of video. I also like to give myself time to come up with ideas for a sequel rather than to force one out for the sake of it. But this time I decided not to wait, and to jump in with the development of a sequel before even having an idea of what it would be about. In a way, having to make two videos of the same series in a row was Two Clicks Philip's way of mixing things up this time. Plus, I knew this would be as close to a guaranteed success as a video could get. It sounds bad, but even if this video was bad, people would watch it simply to see what happened, all thanks to the strength of the first video. But of course, I didn't want to make a bad sequel. Even before I started, there were a lot of challenges to overcome with this second video story. The first video had great ideas, but I didn't know if I could just repeat them again. Odd Grub needlessly slaughtering everyone he met was hilarious, and in the first video, unexpected. But it has already gone on for the right number of outbursts, and I felt it would have been too predictable if the second video was just the same joke again. Odd Grub was already overpowered in the first video. How could I keep the second video entertaining and unexpected? And as somebody who had never played the game on Legendary Difficulty before, there was a chance that it would be too difficult to make a video from. And lastly, Oddgrub's dead. How could I make a sequel to one who has no life? I started by planning a story in my head, and I can't share most of it with you because a lot of it has been saved for the third video. But as you know, the story to the sequel begins with Oddgrub having survived the fall from the first. I actually hate videos that allow people to return from death. Dying should be treated with respect. It should be definitive, just as it is in reality. If it isn't, any future deaths in the plot carry no weight since the viewer knows that anything is possible, and with it, the writer loses one of the most powerful things they can include in their story. And yet, something about Oddgrub returning seemed fitting, and I didn't feel needed explanation. His death in the first video was obviously his own doing, which I think gives him permission to not be dead if he doesn't want to be. It was obviously used as a silly conclusion to the first video that fitted the theme, but wasn't an important enough detail to avoid any possible sequels. Whatever. He returns and no one has complained. The next thing I thought up was the intro sequence of the dragon attacking the town. I wanted something dramatic that didn't involve Odgra, just to keep people waiting that little bit longer to find out if he has returned. It nicely shows the trouble a dragon can cause now that the hero, Oddgrub, isn't around to save the day. This makes his return something to celebrate, and for one short moment he's a hero, before he then goes and kills everybody else as well, ruining a traditional storyline in classic Oddgrub fashion. He could achieve so much more with so much less. In case you wondered, my favourite thing about the first video is how the second half of it is completely pointless. It doesn't progress the story at all. He could simply have enchanted any item of jewellery, yet goes on this huge adventure to find the best, only to discover that they were in his possession all along. I think both of the Odd Grub videos are strongest when they're not advancing the storyline. Time and time again, the best bits for me are when he gets sidetracked by pointless missions, which if this were an A-level English assignment, I'd say represents the heart and soul of the Skyrim experience. But yeah, it was a hellish section of the video to film. I don't like cheating, I don't like spawning dragons or doing stuff when I could be doing it for real. I think a large part of what makes these videos fun is the idea that it's done for real. But I did cheat with the intro sequence. I tried for hours to lure a dragon down from the mountains, but they'd always land and get stuck in the forest area just outside the city. I eventually had to just spawn a dragon in the town itself. And then there was the next problem. The dragon was useless. It failed to kill anybody. The townsmen had no problem killing the dragon within minutes. I tried multiple dragons. I tried ancient dragons. It didn't matter. They were all killed by the guards. You see the dead person on the floor there? That was Oddgrub's doing. I had to set the scene by killing a few of the guards just to make it look like the dragon was a threat of some kind. It didn't even help to hit them down to low health. The dragon still couldn't kill them. For filming, I must have spawned a dragon 20 times. I'd start my screen recorder, then I'd run about, often being attacked by the dragon myself. When I began editing this section, I was so disappointed and felt that it wouldn't live up to the idea that I had for it in my head. But that's the magic of editing. Enough splicing and syncing is enough to make anything good, and accompanying it with the Skyrim soundtrack is borderline cheating. I am very proud of the final thing, which is just as well because I've had to watch it hundreds of times since. It sets the scene for the rest of the video, and I feel it's the closest I've ever gotten to producing another one of those going low in CSGO intros, some of which are still my finest works.
you want to know the secret of the Odd Grub videos. They have a large video long story, but they're also cut up into segments, almost like a sketch show. Even if you don't care about the main narrative, even if you skip five minutes of it, a new scene with its own plot and outcome will soon begin and you'll be able to enjoy it just as much as anybody who sat through the video up till that point. Here's how I see the second Odd Grub video. But there's more to it than that. You can also draw a line here. Anything before this point is more like an extension to the first video than it is a new story. The run to Markarth and the pub slaughter are too similar to what viewers of the first video have already seen. And yet, it was important to include them just to give the fans of the series what they wanted and were familiar with. At least then, even if they didn't like the rest of it, they've got a bit more of what they do like to keep them satisfied and this sequel hasn't been a complete waste. But the moment Ogrub starts hunting animals at legendary difficulty, that's a new territory for the series to cover. All the combat from the bear fight through to the bandit cave was recorded within a matter of hours. I felt like I was making excellent progress with the video. I got it all in the editor, spliced it all together, watched it, and was horrified by how boring it was. Yes, it was Odd Grub fighting legendary difficulty, but it didn't feel right. Yes, he was killing things, but it needed to feel less like a tick list of things to beat. Plus, this was just ordinary gameplay. Anyone playing Skyrim has done this stuff. For it to be Odd Grub, he needs to be killing more innocents. I decided to get a second opinion. I played it to a friend who loved the first video, but who hasn't actually played the game herself. And I was told this sequel was disappointing for another reason. Oddgrub has been made super powerful, only to be nerfed so much that he appears normal again. He felt ordinary, generic, and dull. This was early December, a few weeks through development. I had originally planned to release the video by then, and yet here I was with a half-finished, boring mess. Luckily for me, I had a week-long holiday to go on. And I never sleep too well, so I was able to dedicate all those dark hours to playing the video through in my head, over and over, until I thought of a solution and a tidy one didn't come to me. I had to include those fighting bits. It was what the video set out to do, but I decided to splice random sketches in and give the video a second theme. Oddgrub may have maxed out his armor and weapons in the first video, but he still had to level up and unlock his ability perks. In a way, this made the second video a lot like the first again, but in a good way because it's still different enough to justify and develops Oddgrub's skills further. I blurred the majority of the bar fight, using the time to educate the viewer about legendary difficulty I then loaded an earlier Rodgrub save to fight a bear when he was weaker, which was needed to big up how challenging a bear is on hardest difficulty. Maybe I should have added more sequences like this to the video. But again, the scenes I added were more to address a glaring weakness than to become a selling point of this video. The Angie scene originally showed her being killed, but I thought less was more and instead bigged it up to be a romance before cutting to her death. I still want to keep the viewers on their toes a bit with where this story is headed. Even with these additional scenes, the whole middle combat montage is still my least favourite bit of the video. It stands out to me as being the most generic, most dull bit, and I find myself skipping it whenever I watch the video. But from other people I've asked, they didn't seem to mind it. Maybe I dislike it because of all the sleepless nights I dedicated to remedying it. Fortunately, much like the first video, I think the sequel's best bits start just after the halfway point. That is, the moment the prisoner is stabbed in the back. By this point, I've shown enough of legendary difficulty to justify the video's title, and now I'm free to find some cool stuff to end it on. It starts with my favourite ability perks that Ogrub unlocked during his Level Up Marathon. I do this to educate people about Skyrim, as well as to show off some of the cool things that Ogrub has learned during this video to make him seem even more powerful. I started work on the sequel concerned that Ogrub wouldn't have far to develop. How wrong I was. And I'm pleased I was. The level grind was done for real, of course. I was sat there for hours, browsing my phone while healing Oddgrub whenever he was hurt. But the grinding against the two giants wasn't done at legendary difficulty since I'd have to keep running away so that my magicka and health could regenerate enough to grind some more. Not worth it. Plus, it's not exactly a challenging fight, is it? It's a long slog, so I think doing this bit on novice difficulty is justified. I was thinking of showing the game's difficulty being turned down to novice, and then later Oddgrub accidentally beats a dragon too easily before turning the slider back up again, but decided this was too gimmicky and fake sounding and would have detracted from his quest in a bad way. The paralysis bits are cool. I wanted to show a few of them, but all this is overshadowed by the beheading sequence. You know the one. I am so happy with this bit. The montage started out as a normal length, but when watching it I thought, this is so odd grub. I thought it would be funny to extend it. The question is, how long for? I worked on this for hours, extending it further several times just for the lols. It took me a whole morning to capture the footage for it, the final version drags on for a whole two minutes, far longer than is necessary or, indeed, enjoyable. But that's the joke. Much like Sideshow Bob with the Rex, the joke here is how unnecessary it all is. Oddgrub loves his killing, 
And while the first video shocked with violent outbursts, this beheading sequence succeeds in doing the same kind of thing again, but in a way that's different enough to justify its existence. And I loved watching this sequence during the premiere. It's perfect in all the ways it's not. A video like this is 50% about knowing the game incredibly well and being able to plan out a story in your head, but the other 50% is about trying things out and knowing when to be sidetracked by something you discover along the way. It's these little things that make a video special. It's bits like the undead creature who runs away. I didn't know why he did that, and I didn't expect it until he did. It's about turning a simple beheading into the longest segment of the video because it's the least appropriate part to do that too. And it happened again on my search for a legendary dragon. Did you know the only place with a guaranteed legendary dragon spawn is right here, where Ogre finds one at the end of the video? I didn't. Not until I'd recorded the other dragon fights and was so desperate to find a legendary one that I consulted the Elder Scrolls wiki page on them. I was shocked when I discovered that it was right next to the dragon I had just fought. The way the Elder Dragon got distracted by something further up the mountain, the way it led Odgrub straight to the final challenge, it was too perfect. It was honestly down to luck and wasn't planned at all. I was this close to spawning a legendary dragon, but didn't and think the video is all the better because of it. And what a setting for a fight. Huge ruined towers, death lords everywhere, the aura borealis overhead. The game served the video's grand finale to me on a platter and it was better than had it been planned for. Getting the achievement for killing a legendary dragon only made it even sweeter. It was genuinely the first time I had battled a legendary dragon, and yes, it was at legendary difficulty. The original Ogrub was a fearsome warrior who had been everywhere, but I had played as him back in 2011, long before the expansions and legendary dragons even existed. Plus, he only reached level 60. It's lucky stuff like this that scares me off trying to make a sequel. The first Ogrub video had the same luck, and I had the same worries about making this one. No matter how much you try to plan a video, so much of it is uncertain. In my head I imagined the worst case scenario where nothing goes my way, yet it seems that reality is kind and simply messing with the game unearths so much potential content and this video is all the better for it. And last, that walk back to Lydia. That was something I had planned for, probably before I even intended on making a sequel. It seemed like the only way to one-up running across the entire map. Was it hell to do? No, not at all. Probably took me about an hour, and for most of it I was happily browsing stuff on my phone whilst occasionally adjusting Oddgrub's direction to avoid obstacles. Skyrim's speedruns don't take nearly as long as you might expect them to. I was hoping it would have been a bit longer, really. There's a mistake with this video here. Oddgrub got stuck on a cliff at the very beginning of the run. If you pause it, you can see me using the Toggle Collisions console command. Like I've said, I don't like cheating, but if the alternative is being stuck there forever or having to restart the sequence for something that isn't my fault, I'd rather just cheat a bit and only reveal it in a video such as this one. With all the other stuff I had to remember, I forgot to cut this bit out of the final version, otherwise you can bet I would have removed it entirely and stayed quiet about it forevermore. And then it came to the video's release. What a disaster that was. November and December are the two most profitable months for a YouTuber. I had spent hundreds of hours on this one video. I could have made 10 videos in that time, I made so much money from them instead. And yet I chose not to, because I thought this one video was more important but to delay this video's release into January would have killed me. Don't think I'm only doing it for the money. But why release it in January, when I could instead have it done as a Christmas special for the channel, and have it earn me several times more? Of course I've missed Christmas. I missed all of the deadlines I had aimed for. On top of this, I wanted this to be a YouTube premiere. The first video had been one, and I loved it. It's so fun to watch it through with everybody else, especially the beheading sequence. But this meant uploading early to tease its release. I aim for 24 hours notice. But this arrived and the video wasn't ready, so I uploaded a dummy version of the video instead. In those last 24 hours leading up to its release, I polished and re-uploaded the video so many times. You have no idea how much there is to improve on a video of this length. You're never done with it. You just reach a point where you accept it for what it is and want to move on to something else. But every time you improve it, you think, this is the one I want people seeing, and the earlier versions, although so similar, suddenly aren't good enough anymore. But eventually I had to call it a day and uploaded the final, 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 final version with about three hours to spare. From earlier uploads I knew that it took an hour and a half for YouTube to process it up to HD quality, which is why it premieres at. But this time, it didn't become HD. The premiere's release time came and the file was still 360p, so I delayed it. People were angry, but it also attracted more viewers to it. And then I delayed it again. It was a horrible situation. The video was promised at a certain time, and I had done it. It was just YouTube messing everything up at this point. Eventually I decided to go ahead with the release, hoping for a miracle. But that didn't come. The video premiered in 360p. I watched it with thousands of others in embarrassment. For a video produced in 4K throughout, and released with a controversial YouTube premiere feature, 
This hurt me more than the 360p quality hurt your eyes. Months of work. Ruined. A bit. It was still fun. In the end, it took 9 hours for the video to process. And then there was the demonetization. For some reason, or perhaps a hundred of them, YouTube deemed this video unacceptable for ad revenue. I contested it in the hope they'd allow it. And amazingly, they did. On January the 1st, after the ad revenue had plummeted. It's only then that it started being promoted as well. Now I'm not saying that YouTube only promotes videos with ads enabled, but that's what it seems like to me. So far, the video has done brilliantly. In January. Two clicks Philip's stats for the start of the new year are some of the best he's ever seen. The ad revenue? Not so much. It's a shame, but I did kind of see it coming. I decided the beheading sequence was important enough to include, despite the potential demonetization it might lead to. Even if this video remained demonetized forever, I don't think I'd have done anything differently. This kind of project is something I'm proud of. It's the best video that I can make. If I was to censor it, I'd forever feel it had been ruined in some way. More so than demonetization could ever do. The launch may have been messy, but now it's a beautiful, polished 4K video of the highest quality. It's a video I'm happy with, and will no doubt watch dozens of times. Give it a few months and I'll have forgotten about the development pains, and will be able to appreciate it for what it is, and will marvel at how coherent the end result was, despite such a messy development. Yes, I added lots of Lord of the Rings 2 Tower references, because like that movie, it's the second part of a trilogy. Yes, I know this is all pretentious A-level English stuff that I promised myself I'd never do in my own works, but I love cramming my videos with as many easter eggs and references as I can get away with. I managed to butcher the knife through hot butter saying again, tearing through the cave full of bandits like a hot knife through margarine. I got to end the video on somebody falling off the mountain with Lydia moaning about her burdens again. I managed another lonely sequence. I managed another innuendo sequence. I managed another paralysis sequence. I managed to add twists to old jokes. I managed a Jon Snow cave reference. And, most importantly of all, I made a worthy sequel that is still different enough to justify its existence. Even though halfway through its development I realised it was going to be way too long and messily chopped the video in half, the rest saved for a third and final video at a later date. And I feel the stronger half has been saved till last. All in all, the footage for this video came to over 500 gigabytes in size. It's the biggest project I have ever worked on and I am seriously dreading the work the third video will require. So much of what will make it special is uncertain and beyond my control. Making a video like this is no fun. It's a long, painful, uncertain slog. But it feels like a disappointment until the final edit. And yet, despite this, it's worth it. This is the payoff for all those years of producing content, of honing my skills and refining my style. I may think I've got video making sussed, it may even start to feel boring and predictable. But then a project like this comes along and pushes me beyond what I thought I was capable of. Overnight, my previous best isn't good enough anymore. All of a sudden, I'm in unexplored territory again, and it feels overwhelming and endless. Then eventually it all comes together. Through the mess and chaos, something beautiful emerges. It's something that I'm proud to share with the world, my friends and family, that I'll cherish forever. What?